Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I'd like to make a video in my series about the esoteric path and I'd like to talk about the topics of magic and mysticism. So I want to start by talking about magic and I'm going to be holding up the magician card from the tarot. And I want to start this way by talking about magic, referring to this card because I want to talk about my thoughts about magic in regard to the esoteric path and just by looking at this card I think it tells you quite a bit about magic and the magician and what a practitioner of magic is and with this card as well I think it's good to keep in mind that this is regardless of gender because sometimes magicians are thought of as being male but of course they can be either gender or any gender in this card, there's really two things about magic. I think a lot of people would mainly focus on the practice of magic and they would be thinking about the tools on the table, the tools that are used for practicing magic and for ritual if it's going to be ceremonial magic or a more practical type of folk magic type of thing. I think most people think about that in regard to magic. But what I focus on with this card is the way that the magician is pointing. Pointing to the heavens and pointing to the earth and that comes from the hermetic idea as above so below and I think you also need to think about the eternity symbol as well above the magician's head so I think what's happening up here is actually just as important as what is implied here. And I think another thing to keep in mind is that this card is ruled by the planet Mercury according to the Golden Dawn Associations. Now this video is going to be about magic and it's also going to be about mysticism. And I'm going to compare these two things. And I want to talk about this in relation to the esoteric path and these are my views from my experience I wanted to talk about these two things magic and mysticism about the differences and I want to talk about this also for a kind of guidance as far as the different paths or methods that people may want to choose on the esoteric path. So the magician being ruled by Mercury, it's usually to do with the mind and attitude and the planet Mercury not only rules the sign of Gemini, it also rules the sign of Virgo. So it's about the practice of magic, the practical side of magic. But I like to think particularly more about Mercury, the planet Mercury ruling the mind, that part of magic. Because if you also look at this card, it definitely looks like the magician is actually a conduit of energy actually 
channeling energy from above to below to the earth so magic and the practice of magic can be or should be about the experience of energy learning about minute learning about energy because mercury rules the Mercury is the planet of learning, as far as, particularly as far as the sign of Gemini. So learning about working with energy and the working and practice part is Mercury ruling Virgo. So I think one of the main things I want to say about magic is magic should really be a goal rather than or an intention rather than the path itself now I'm not saying anything against people who choose magic as a path and by this I particularly mean ceremonial magic I'm not really talking as much about witchcraft here because for me I have always seen witchcraft as a type of folk magic because I'm not talking about Wicca because Wicca is a ceremonial type of magic. Wicca is ceremonial. I have looked into and practiced ceremonial and folk magic earlier on in my path so I have I have studied the magic I have practiced it for a relatively short while as far as the practice is concerned because the magician is about experience it's about experimentation I think you definitely have to experiment with things in a safe and mindful way because this is all about attitude and intention this is mercury again I have done that But what happened with me along the way, personally, I found I didn't have as much need for magic as time went on. And for me, on my esoteric path, that led me more to mysticism. And I'm going to talk about mysticism more in this video as well. Now, this card also reminds me of about Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley is the ultimate magician. He was the ultimate magician. He led a life and a path totally dedicated to magic. And technically he was a very clever and talented magician. But what is also needed in regard to magic is balance. So here is the justice card representing balance, the scale of balance. Unfortunately with Alistair Crowley, his sense of balance was lost along the way because he became engrossed and totally focused on magic and this is where things can possibly go wrong with magic if it becomes your only focus your total focus most of your life or your whole life this is where the choice of magic needs to be very mindful and considered and balanced Alistair Crowley's life 
his personal life was always chaotic. It was always in chaos. He did not have a very happy or fulfilling personal life. He used magic to control his environment and he used magic to control others. Unfortunately, the choice he should have made was to use magic to try to balance and control himself. But he did not do that. And as much as I have quite a good regard or high regard for the philosophies and abilities of Crowley and his philosophy of Salima. I can see what goes wrong with not using magic in an ethical and right way and not using magic in a balanced way. So I just wanted to talk about that first in regard to magic. Earlier on in my path, magic was used occasionally. I studied magic most of the time rather than practicing magic. And yes, magic does work. Magic does work, but you still need to be balanced about your intention, your attitude, what types of methods are you using and why are you using them. They are all of the things that I discovered and experienced along the way about magic. Now just talking a little bit more about Crowley, Alistair Crowley. You know, his own, his own tarot deck. This is where we're going to talk about Crowley and mysticism now. Crowley was interested in mysticism, definitely was, especially Eastern mysticism and the Hindu type of mysticism. And there are elements of mysticism in the Toth deck, in the images, because he did design the images, even though Frida Harris painted them, he did design the images. There are elements of mysticism in these images. Because this is based on his philosophy of the Lima, it's actually quite a mystical philosophy. And Egyptian mysticism as well, as well as Hindu mysticism. So I think the thing that I also want to say about Crowley, also in his book, the Book of Toth, which the deck is based on his Book of Toth, And this book also is based on his tarot deck. They go hand in hand. Crowley was definitely interested in mysticism. He definitely was. I think this is where the balance part was coming in. I think he was having trouble balancing his main interest. He was, he was driven to perform magic. He felt inwardly driven to perform magic. It, it took over his life and this is where it's not a good idea. And I think he was always trying to balance that. You know, magic on one side and mysticism on the other. He was actually inwardly trying to balance those things. He got very interested in mysticism. And this was after the Golden Dawn and for the rest of his life after that. He got very interested in mysticism, but his drive for magic and performing magic, it almost became an obsession with him. It overruled, magic overruled his interest in mysticism and any other kind of spirituality. So instead of the balance that he needed so much and strangely enough he was a Libran too which is the scales 
So he, he really did need this balance, but he never really found that because he kept on focusing on magic and not using it in the right way. As I was saying, if you're using it to control your environment and other people, you are not using magic in the right way. So things are going to get very unbalanced in your life. Now to talk about mysticism. I'm just getting another tarot card now to talk about mysticism. The card of mysticism is the High Priestess. And it is a mystical, you know, this is the card. This is the card that represents mysticism. And it's interesting that the High Priestess is a mysterious figure. So you've got mysticism and mystery, very similar words. And mysticism is deep contemplation. It can be meditation as well. For me, it's contemplation. And I also like the, the book, which is said to be either the Akashic Records or the Esoteric Knowledge. In a lot of ways, it's both. And this has been, or this is still, this, this is a representation of mysticism, especially for me on my esoteric path, and has been for quite a long time. And it is very fulfilling, and it is just getting deeper all the time because this is to do with learning about the mysteries and using contemplation to encounter the veil of mystery. That is why the High Priestess card is associated with the veil of the mysteries. And I think the next step on from the High Priestess card is the Hermit. For me, the Hermit represents the path itself and staying on the path. And the Hermit card is, is associated with the sign of Virgo and the Golden Dawn Association. So this is walking the path and staying on the path and this is this represents this lamp here to me represents the lamp of enlightenment having the staff to keep you grounded and con consistent on the path and the high priestess card is ruled by the moon You have the two pillars here with the High Priestess. So these cards are about mysticism on the es esoteric path. And what I want to talk about here is with mysticism. I've got the Dion Fortune book here about Kabbalah, which is an absolute classic, and I've shown this book on my channel a few times before. Interesting that it's actually called Mystical Kabbalah. So this is about Hermetic Kabbalah of the Golden Dawn, Mystical Kabbalah. And Dion Fortune definitely saw Kabbalah as mystical. And that, that is based on fact because Hermetic Kabbalah is based on Jewish Kabbalah and Jewish Kabbalah is a form of mysticism. 
So this is my path of mysticism. You can use different methods. It does not have to be Kabbalah, but for me, it is Hermetic Kabbalah. And Dion Fortune, the people who don't know, had been a member of Alpha and Omega, which was a lodge, a later lodge of the Golden Dawn after it had been disbanded. And then Dion Fortune founded her own Society of Inner Light, which was her own order. So this is a great book, and it, it's, it is really about the Kabbalah in relation, or Hermetic Kabbalah in relation to mysticism. That's why it's quite a spiritual book, and for a lot of people, you know, you need to read this slowly to absorb the mystical teachings that are in this book. The next thing I want to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about, is tarot. And I already talked about how this particular tarot deck is actually quite a mystical deck in regard to the images and the concepts that are in this deck. I want to show this book Gnostic Tarot by Lee Irwin and the subtitle is Mandalas for Spiritual Transformation. Gnosticism is related quite closely with mysticism. Gnosticism is experiential and Gnosis means to know and which is in comparison to belief or believing. This is to know. So that's the other thing about Crowley. Crowley's The Lima philosophy had a lot of Gnostic concepts in connection with it. So this is where mysticism and Gnosticism entwine. And this book is a great book. It is still available, but it has a different cover now. But it's still available. Lee Irwin is a wonderful writer. He's an expert on spiritual subjects. And this book is about the Gnostic approach to tarot and there are spreads at the back of the book that he calls mandalas. And these are not spreads for divination, these are spreads for contemplation. And they are quite amazing. I'm calling them spreads, but he calls them mandalas. But they, these, these are quite amazing. And they're mainly for using. The mandala spreads are used uh, with the major arcana cards because they contain the greater mysteries. But this whole book is about all 78 cards. It's a really unique book. So if you want to have a look at a Gnostic stroke mystical approach to tarot, this is the book to get. Gnostic Tarot by Lee Irwin. Now, I wanted to talk about those two topics today in regard to the esoteric path, the differences between magic and mysticism. Because a lot of people already are aware about magic and a lot of people choose magic 
whether it's ceremonial magic or whether it is uh, folk magic or witchcraft or wicca. But the esoteric path is more about empowerment. Now, that's, let's just go back to this for a moment. There's different types. The other, one last thing I want to say about magic, in regard to kind of how it connects to a contrast with mysticism. Magic, in regard to these tools of magic here, it can become a practical act where it's just about manipulating energy for a particular outcome, for a desired end in itself. But, and this is what went wrong with Alistair Crowley in his magical practice. What this card is really about, it's about self-empowerment. If you are using whichever method, whether it's magic or whether it's mysticism, with mysticism you can't get into the kinds of trouble that you can with magic. But what I want to say here is that where I have studied and practiced magic, I have found that in order to gain self-empowerment, and, and that for me is the whole reason of having an esoteric path. If you are not self-fulfilled and if the path itself is not fulfilling, then you should be looking at why are you why are you on the esoteric path in the first place? And especially after a, quite a period of time, you do need to review what you are doing along the way. Because self-empowerment should be the real goal. You know, you can't empower others or help others unless you are self-empowered yourself. That is what real magic is. Real magic is not the outer trappings and all the different practices and, you know, you could be the most technically clever magician. But if you don't have self-empowerment and true self-fulfillment, then you, you are not achieving your goals. And that is why for me, mysticism has been a better choice. It's been a better choice for me. Because for me, there is self-fulfillment and there is self-empowerment and the self-empowerment gets stronger all the time gets more confirmed within myself so thing before I go. This is a really interesting thing that I just noticed with these two cards. Isn't it interesting that the High Priestess card has the two pillars in here which are about balance. Here is the High Priestess sitting between the two pillars, sort of balancing them. And you have the two pillars here with the Justice card. Maybe that's why, personally, I have found much better balance and self-empowerment 
with the mystical path. So that's an interesting thought to finish with. So that's all I'm saying for today um, on my topic of magic and mysticism and I will put some details below the video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.